Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all of my Storm fans out there. It's me, your captain speaking, and I'm getting ready to stream for all of you lovely people. But if you give me just a few minutes, I'm going to make sure that all of you lovely people actually know that I'm streaming. So keep all legs, arms, and other extremities inside this moving vehicle as we head off to stormy waters. I'll be right back. Oh my gosh. Every single time. Well, welcome everybody. I'm going to just say it all over again. And uh, we're going to be storming off today uh, courtesy of a YouTube member, Sean Deegnan. Um They are a YouTube member at the status that gets a monthly donation deck. And we're actually going to be playing their donation deck uh, Welder Storm. This is a fantastic new addition to the Storm lineup uh, with cards that have actually been around for a hot minute. Like none of these cards are super new, but just like a bunch of other things, Death Shadow in Modern, for example, this is a pile of cards that has really just 
come together really nicely. So we're going to uh, we're going to take this out for a spin. I'm pretty excited about this one. Um, and I'll give you a little bit of an overview of the deck before we get into the league that I have queued up. Um, I'm a little stuffy. Um, <clears throat> allergies have been kind of kicking my butt recently. And um, I'm in the Midwest. I don't think that I'm getting any of the, the Canada smog as Canada burns. But if you all are nearby that, I hope that you all are staying safe and uh, maintaining a he healthy respiratory system. That's always important. So uh, I hope that all of you are doing okay. And thank you all for joining, and let's get into this. The deal is <clears throat> we're going to be playing Bolus's Citadel. This is one of the most broken cards on the planet when it comes to storming off if you can make your deck work well with it. So, Bolus' Citadel. Three and three black for a legendary artifact. You may look at the top card of your library at any time. And then you can play lands and cast spells from the top of your library. If you cast a spell this way, pay life equal to its mana value rather than paying its mana cost. So, we can cheat, if you want, very powerful spells into play just by paying life. So we're we're taking uh, a conversion of life for storm, which is really excellent. Uh, it also has an activated ability, sacrifice tap the artifact, sacrifice 10 non-land permanents. Each opponent loses 10 life. That's not going to come up quite as much, but it is going to be uh, good enough as it is. Bolus' Citadel, also affectionately known as the house, because it's a citadel, it's a house. This is the house. This is Bolus's house, and we are not going to tread uh, uh, wantonly. So uh, we're going to use Bolus's Citadel, but it's a six mana artifact. How are we getting into play? Well, obviously we can have Dark Ritual and Mox Opal and Lotus Petal and all of our really awesome mana acceleration, but and a really great way to do it is with Goblin Welder. So, hey, Sean, there he is. Absolutely. Sean, thank you very much for supporting this stream as a donation deck, your monthly donation deck. It's fantastic. It's awesome. It's an awesome perk that you guys get to, uh, to take advantage of. So um, thank you for your support. Uh, back to Goblin Welder. So Goblin Welder is, uh, uh, yes, yeah, Synthesizer LED. I'll get to that tap choose an artifact in play let's actually look at this uh this is the the better text choose an artifact in play uh player controls and target artifact in that player's graveyard if both targets are still legal as the ability resolves then you sacrifice the artifact and return uh the one that's in the graveyard into play so you just swap uh, uh like you swap them from the graveyard and the battlefield um instantaneously so Really cool effect, and I can actually take uh, Mishra's Bobble and turn it into a Bolus' Citadel. It's wild. That is a, uh, well, very punny way of saying this is taking trash for treasure because we actually have the card trash for treasure in our sideboard, which I will I will talk about in a little bit. Um, the other one, as, as Alan has pointed out, Experimental Synthesizer. When it enters or leaves the battlefield, I can exile the top card of my library, and then until end of turn, I can play that card. So if I, uh, it also has a sacrifice ability for three, and I can create a 2-2 two -two token with Vigilance, and um, if I exile a Bolus' Citadel, then I can use Lion's Eye Diamond to pay for the costs of Bolus' Citadel. One of the quirks of Lion's Eye Diamond is that I can't actually use it to cast spells in my hand, um, but that doesn't really matter. So, really cool deck. We are also an Echo of Eons deck. We have a lot of artifacts and a lot of fast mana here. Uh, we are some Mishra's Bobbles, Experimental Synthesizers, and uh, hey, Jason. Excuse me. Um, and this is just going to churn through our deck. Our 
our tutor, tutor package, we have four infernal tutors. So this works really nicely as a combo with Lion's Eye Diamond. And if we are hellbent, thanks to Lion's Eye Diamond, um, or just casting our spells naturally, when we bolus a Citadel, then we can use Infernal Tutor as a demonic tutor and work out really nicely. Wishclaw Talisman, another artifact that plays really nicely. If you know the Epic Storm, you love the Wishclaw Talismans. Um, Goblin Welder obviously is our ability to swap graveyard and battlefield, put Bolus the Citadel into play. Uh, Singleton Burning Wish for our five strong um, Burning Wish slots that I'll talk about in just a second. And then a Singleton Entomb that works really well with all of our tutors that we can get the Entomb and then use that for Goblin Welder, Fodder, Bolus the Citadel, if we need a Lion's Eye Diamond for some reason, then we've got it. If we need protection, then we've got a defense grid. That Goblin Welder synergy works really well. Um, so we also have a few bits of discard, two Thoughtsies, and a Cabal Therapy. And that Cabal Therapy actually works really well with our Plan B, which is over on the corner here, Urza Saga. Another Urza Saga combo deck, it's fantastic. This is a fair plan thanks to all of our artifacts that we have um, that can close the door without ever having to worry about putting a bunch of spells on the stack. So if our opponent has a rule of law effect out, then Urza Saga can take that unfair plan and turn it into a fair plan at the drop of a hat. Our, our mana base is five artifact lands, Great Furnace and Vault of Whispers. I've chosen the old border art, the retro frame treatment, a couple of fetch lands, a basic swamp, and three bad lands. So, Dominic, hey, Cybane, hello. Welcome, welcome. So, our sideboard, uh, let's get to the Burning Wish package first. We have Biforce. This destroys X target artifacts for X and a red. Um, anything from Null Rods to... <laughs> Trinispheres to Chalice of the Voids. It's a very useful tool to have in the sideboard. Feed the Swarm. This works to destroy target creature or enchantment. So this can get your Collector Oops or your Leyline of the Voids or Leyline of Sanctities because we are winning with Tendrils of Agony, right? We don't have another win uh, <clears throat> outside of Tendrils of Agony yet and uh, peer into the abyss because you know what if i have a bunch of mana and a burning wish then peer into the abyss is just money in my pocket so the cards that we're actually going to be sideboarding in are a uh, sideboard juke four copies of leyline of the void and a helm of obedience so if you don't know leyline of the void is graveyard hate um, and I can exile my opponent's graveyard. And then Helm of Obedience is an old card. Uh, tap a po target opponent, mills a card, and then repeats the process until a creature card or X cards are milled. Well, uh, if I have a ley line out, then nothing is actually hitting the graveyard. So I get to mill my entire uh, opponent's library out, and then they go to their next turn and draw a card and lose. So, pretty cool. And then we have Fatal Pushes. Uh, again, Thalias and Collector Oofs or Problematic Permanent uh, Creatures, Hate Bears, very useful. Um, and then some Urza Saga targets. Surge Node, again, for Chalice of the Void. Um, and then Haywire Might for things like Leyline and Chalice and um, <clears throat> things like that. Obviously, this can't actually hit Null Rod or Stony Silence because this is an artifact with an activated ability, so not going to work very well. But I'm pretty excited about this. I've got a League already queued up. This is Sean Deegan's, um deck, and this is the donation list that we're going to be running for them. I'm pretty excited and looking forward to it. So without further ado, I'm going to queue into 
a league and then tell you a little bit about the links that you can see in the video description if you're on YouTube. And uh, you can check out this list on Card Hoarder and rent it um, or check it out on TCG Player and actually buy it in paper. So let me tell you about that. With Card Hoarder, renting your favorite combo deck has never been easier. There isn't a more affordable solution for Magic Online. Want to play the deck in this video? Check out the pink comment below to easily rent the deck from Card Hoarder. Did you know you can rent the Epic Storm from Card Hoarder for as little as 7 tickets a week? We've made it simple to do so by including a button to rent the entire deck at theepicstorm.com slash decklist. Oh, whoop, yep, 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 sorry. I was blowing my nose. Um, <clears throat> yeah, name a better duo. Bryant Cook and Trophies this season. That's actually a better duo. Seven this, this season. That's pretty good. Going strong. Anyway, all right, let's get back to business. We are actually queued up into our opponent, so let's do this. I have a Goblin Welder, Thoughtseize, Experimental Synthesizer, Burning Wish. I'm actually going to keep this. Yeah, let's keep this. All right, we're on the draw. Uh, Dominic, yeah, yeah. Bryant is a well-dressed man. Okay, let's see what our opponent is doing. Beseju, Exploration. So we're playing lands. Typically a good combo matchup, but we'll see. Taiga, we are completely wastelandable. Um, okay, so... I'm going to thought seize our opponent. Um, they could have something like uh, Sphere of Resistance in the main deck. Oh, Sylvan Library. That's another thing that I would like to get rid of. Um, you know, that's actually a good point, Bryant. Uh, Entomb, some kind of Entomb, like a Faithless Looting even, um, might be worth the Burning Wish target. So I discarded to Sylvan Library. Our opponent has a couple of Punishing Fires, which are a little rough with his Goblin Welder, but that might not be something that we need to uh, worry about. We can combo in other ways. Oh, they're not even playing the Dark Depths. They're scared of Wasteland. Okay. Defense Grid. Um, <clears throat> so Defense Grid is interesting. I don't think that I want to play out the Experimental Synthesizer. I didn't start with a Badlands, just in case Wasteland. Um, so if I exile a land, then I can't actually play it. So I'm going to run the Defense Grid out. And they're going to Punishing Fire me in response. That works. That's one less Punishing Fire that I need to worry about for my creature. I'm pretty okay with that. And then next turn we can Synthesizer and see where things go. You can't hear me, Kevin. I don't think that that's a me problem, thankfully. Uh, I think that everybody else can hear me, but I don't know. Uh, okay, so both Punishing Fires are actually gone. Mm, let's start off with the synthesizer. Defense grid again. Well, I can do that. I can burning wish for something, but nothing really comes to mind at the moment. Peer into the abyss might be the best target eventually. That'll take a bit. Um, I don't care about destroying this exploration with the Feed the Swarm. So I think that I'm going to just um, play out this defense grid again, another one, and just keep kind of turning through the deck. Next turn, I will be able to Experimental Synthesizer and see where things go. 
Our opponent is missing land drops, which is wild to me. Um, <clears throat> oh, the ASMR primer stream? Yeah, that could happen. You gotta donate for that stuff. Um, oh, I played a land. Oh, that was silly. Now if I hit a land, uh, I'm not gonna crack it, because if I hit an Urza Saga, that's gonna really feel bad. Um, but we are one mana away from Peer into the Abyss now. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then Peer into the Abyss is seven. So I'm actually gonna get that now. Yes, Bryant, I am, I'm getting there. I may be slow on the uptake, but I got there. And you know what? I actually should have played out the Goblin Welder because I could have swapped out this defense grid and a pedal and actually cast Peer next turn. I didn't uh, didn't see that one. Oh, well, I had an endurance. Yeah, a little bit of a clean shaven face. It gets scruffy because I get lazy. That's what the real deal is. Okay, they have one card in hand and I don't know it. Oops. Um, let's play out this Goblin Welder. Uh, let's synthesize her first, actually. Ooh, okay. Let's cast that. Should we do anything? I, I'm gonna play out the Goblin Welder and I think that's it. Uh, I think I can still peer next turn, no problem. So I missed out on a peer this turn because of the Goblin Welder being delayed. That's my fault. Um, oh, they have a Grove, okay. <laughs> well, that is a little bit punishing. You like what I did that there? I uh, thought that that was pretty funny. Okay, so they have the second red source with the mux. Uh, or, well, they had a lot of red sources, so we're all good. Hmm. Okay. So Wishclaw Talisman can get some more mana eventually, or I can just Infernal Tutor for a Lotus Petal right now. So I can do all of that right now. No problem. And take a storm off of my opponent's clock. Uh, or my clock for our opponent, I should say. Um, I don't think that our opponent can do anything, but I've been wrong before, so we'll see. Hmm. My cat was getting into my water and now there's hair everywhere. Super fun. <clears throat> of it and that's it okay and we draw a great furnace okay well I will play that that's gonna give me just plenty of mana to work with and I'll cast this pier turn seven wow uh, so I'll hold priority so that I can cast this pier and sacrifice this lion's eye diamond Let's sack for black. On curve beer. Yeah, you are right. All right. So we have another Lotus Petal. And we can kind of click to our heart's content. There's Dark Ritual, Dark Ritual. We have the Tendrils. So this is lethal. And we don't have to worry about... Uh... <clears throat> 
punishing fire because they're in the graveyard and we have two defense grids but i am going to thought seize just in case we see something new we didn't and there okay peer into the abyss who knew powerful card hello alex welcome all right starting off strong um okay so our opponent is likely to have some force of vigors um not a graveyard combo deck so i'm not going to be bringing in the ley lines uh haywire might actually might be a reasonable card to bring in and maybe maybe that's it feed the swarm is better as a burning wish target i think Hmm. No, Feed the Swarm might actually... Yeah, let's leave it in the sideboard. Okay. I don't really need to bring too much in here, which is nice. I can bring in the Haywire Mite as kind of a catch-all. They're a Wasteland deck, so we'll see if our Urza Saga actually makes it that far. And then they might be a Mind Break Trap deck, and I'm keeping in the defense grids because of that, but I can shave one. I think that that's reasonable. Um, yeah, yeah, I think that that's good. I'm going to keep that. <clears throat> Seeing where my cat is. Doing all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, all right. We're just waiting on my opponent to finish sideboarding. Sean, for what it's worth, this deck already feels good. I misplayed and missed a, an entirely easy combo with Goblin Welder and deck rescued me and was able to peer into the abyss and just clean it all up really easy. Um, against lands though, kind of a easy game one combo matchup, but still. Pretty good. Um, I am I am liking this basic swamp in the match, so wasteland is going to be less of a concern if I can just find or fetch the basic swamp. Could be useful. Um, we'll see. Our opponent is taking a little bit of time. There we go. Okay, thoughtsies. Some redraws. Technically the basic, but I want this to get red now. Um, nothing fast. But this Thoughtseize is nice, because I can strip a Sphere of Resistance or a Mind Break Trap. Well, the, the Defense Grid actually has the Mind Break Trap covered for now. Uh, I'm going to keep this. Let me know what you guys think. Our opponent is starting off strong with their Mox Diamond. Very good card. Blast Zone. Okay. And a Life from the Loam. Okay. That is the two drop that I was least concerned about, I think. Urza Saga. No, oh, that's a good card. So I'm going to play out this Mishra's Bobble, and I'm going to bobble them. We haven't seen anything that... Oh, Sphere on top. Oh, that's really unfortunate. Oh, boy. <clears throat> well, let's see why they kept it. It might be another Sphere. I kind of doubt it, but okay. Yikes. So I'm not going to be able to take them off of, off of Force of Vigor. This is a problem with Thoughtseize, right? Um... So I can take the crop rotation and they, I can only, I only have to worry about one force of vigor and they have sphere of resistance, which is going to be a pain. Yeah. Okay. Well, that sphere on top was, was brutal. Lion's eye diamond. That's not bad. And they cast the Sphere. 
Ooh. Okay. Oh. Oh, wait. Oh! Never mind. I'm an idiot. They dredged life from the loam. And they got rid of the sphere. I don't have to worry about that. That's great. I I was just not paying close enough attention. So, they have Life from the Loam Wasteland going. And I've got um, some things to do. I've got a basic swamp that this can get. I've got red with a Mox Opal. Um, not looking too bad. So, next turn, I can Saga, Basic Swamp, Defense Grid. They have to force the Saga then if they want to. Okay, they found two Wastelands, an Urza Saga of their own. And I know they have Grove, Force, Force, and then the three cards... Wasteland, Wasteland, Urza Saga. Okay. Good to know. Waste, Waste Saga. They play a Saga. So I know their hand now. Another Mox Opal. Okay. So they can force of Vigor me with the Saga trigger on the stack. Therefore, it doesn't know how to make mana. Oh, nope, okay, never mind. And I couldn't tap it for anything. But they didn't do that, likely because they have a Wasteland. So if they want to take the turn completely off, they can spend three mana in my upkeep and force of vigor me because of that i don't think that i'm going to play out any of my artifacts so we'll just leave it for now they will likely wasteland me and see if they dredge life from the loam nope they take an actual draw they play the grove so i know force force waste waste or wasteland, Wasteland, I should say. And they hard cast Force of Vigor. Okay. That does take me off of Metalcraft. But... So, Wasteland, Wasteland, Force of Vigor, unknown card. So, this is one, two, three, four five, six, seven, which two of them have to be Wishclaw Talisman, so I have five mana right now. I could Echo. Um, although, if they have a green card, then that is completely shut down. They're tapped out, and this is going to be problematic in the future. So let's make this happen now. Get a Badlands. Wishclaw Talisman. Mox Opal. Lion's Eye Diamond. Mox Opal. Let's tap this for a red. And Sack. Do I want a red or a black floating? Actually, let's take a look at this. Do I want red or black floating? I want black floating, almost certainly. Okay. Let's get the echo and wheel. Okay. Well, there's the house, which isn't what I wanted. I didn't leave red floating, so that wasn't very good. Uh, yikes. Uh, okay, that was not what we were looking for, but uh, we'll see where it goes.
something our opponent can do if they have a pithing needle is in response to this trigger um, pay mana to activate Wishclaw Talisman uh, since they can do it on their turn at instant speed um, and then needle Wishclaw Talisman which would be you know kind of neat but instead they're doing a little bit of everything using crop rotation to its fullest potential okay oh wow yeah they're really they're really going for it they have four cards in hand and i sphere of resistance okay so they are playing spheres good to know Infernal Tutor. Not what we were looking for, as a matter of fact. Um, Alright, let's play out this Goblin Welder. I'm one artifact away from Metalcraft. We really need a Burning Wish so that we can get the... Um, is it by Force? Yeah, by force. Maybe I just need that in my main deck. That might be that might be useful. Now that I know they're playing spheres, they're a construct deck too. Maybe that's not a bad idea in the big at the very beginning anyway. <clears throat> Wasteland. Okay. I don't think that we're gonna win this one. But there's game three, and we can clean up game three. Let's do that. Yeah. Okay, let's go to game three. Save uh, some life EV and go to game three. Let's bring in this by force and then take out. Because of the, the context of the hate cards that they have, things like Sphere of Resistance and Force of Vigor, obviously Defense Grid stops Force of Vigor, but. I'm less concerned about Mind Break Trap now. So let's uh, hit it like that. Hit Submit, see where it goes. Mm. I don't think this is gonna be it. This is not great either okay so i'll mulligan this this is the best one we've seen i can put back tendrils of agony and infernal tutor play out haywire might without a green source um and then hope to infernal tutor my way to a polis citadel with enough mana yeah okay we're gonna keep this Tendrils and Infernal Tutor. Or, no, actually. I don't need the Haywire Might. Um, and I can Infernal Tutor for another Dark Ritual as my mana. So, yeah, let's do that. Let's do that instead. Okay. <clears throat> what our opponent has. They kept seven, which, you know, and on Mox Diamond. Okay. Most of their Mox Diamond starts are quite good. Urza Saga. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Now... This would be a juicy force of vigor, not gonna lie. Three, four, five, six, seven. So we're one mana away, actually, from Bolus's Citadel. Kinda nice. That Lotus Petal was a good draw. Oh. 
Well, the main phase surgical extraction is gonna get there. Um, wild. I uh, typically you do that in your opponent's draw step, but our opponent might have a reason for it. They might be using it as a peak to determine what they're going to be doing for their next turn. I don't know. Our opponent is threatening lethal, actually. Uh, force of Vigor. Yeah, okay. That sucks. Okay. Uh, surgical in the draw step because they might have drawn a card that you are surgicaling um, and therefore you remove their draw step right so if they if our opponent waited for my draw step then if I drew a another infernal tutor then they would have gotten two cards from my hand and not just one or if I if I drew and my only infernal tutor then they would have gotten a card from my hand and removed my draw step. So, um, in this case, it looks like they were actually using it as a peak to determine whether or not to hard cast Force of Vigor against me. Um, makes sense. So, I think that our opponent still made the right play. It just didn't look like it up at the very beginning. Hmm. So next, so end of turn, our opponent can crack this map for a Dark Depths and then play it, and then they have more than enough mana to activate Thespian Stage and kill me. With one card in hand, I really need to draw a Bolus' Citadel. Or like uh like an experimental synthesizer that's really good, maybe. Um, it's really just got to be the, the house. Or I'm just dead right now. So, our opponent has beaten us. That crop rotation ended up being lethal. Okay, so we won game one fairly handily. And then in game two and three, we got kind of housed by uh, sideboard cards. Force of Vigor, Surgical Extraction, uh, Sphere of Resistance. Yeah, it happens. Okay, so I'm gonna start up another league. Um, oh, when I say house, I mean Bolus's Citadel. This is Bolus's house. We're gonna call it house. Um, so Bolus's Citadel is uh, affectionately known as the house so yeah um all right pair into another league and i'll tell you a little bit about our awesome tokens uh keeping track of storm mana you actually have goblin tokens ooze tokens um exile piles for relay and things like that i'm going to be using it next weekend not this saturday but the following saturday there's actually a local probably equivalent to like a 5k that I'll be playing in and I will definitely be using the token pack. So let me tell you about it. Looking to make playing your favorite combo deck much easier? Look no further than the Epic Storm mini token combo pack, which is available at theepicstorm.com slash shop for $14.99. This combo token pack comes with 84 double-sided tokens. That includes our classic Storm and mana tokens, as well as fan favorites such as goblins, squirrels, and slime time live. But that's not all. We've expanded this token pack to cover a variety of formats with new tokens. Stop on by the epicstorm.com slash shop and make an easy decision to elevate your combo game. Alrighty, so we're still waiting for our opponent. Um, so something that Bryant mentioned, I'll pull up the deck again. We don't have an entomb, an entomb effect, I should say, in the sideboard that we can Burning Wish for. So we need a way to put house in the graveyard for our goblin welder 
if that's the line that we're choosing. Uh, Burning Wish does not have an Entomb effect. Um, is there a Sorcery Speed Entomb that I can get? I don't know. That's a Scryfall search for another time. But right now, we are paired for round two. And this is, uh, <clears throat> okay. So this is probably not a keep. Um, Infernal Tutor could technically go get the, um, Echo of Eons, but I would sack the Lion's Eye Diamond. Yeah, that's not, not going to work. Okay, I'm going to mulligan this. Saga. That's a fair Saga plan, and it's uh, potentially good. I could just play out a bunch of Sagas. Um, yeah, gamble if I'm a good player, that's for sure. Um, <clears throat> am I going to keep this? Yeah, sure. Let's make my opponent beat the fair plan. We're on the draw. Thespian stage. Uh-oh. Once upon a time. That's probably not lands. Cloud post. Oh, boy. Pithing needle. This is probably going to name Wishclaw Talisman. I have played up against my opponent before. Oh, Wasteland. Okay. They must not remember me. That's good. Goblin Welder. That seems like a good card. And they have another Pithing Needle. Okay. Well, our opponent can name a uh, Goblin Welder, which is fine because they're not gonna name Urza's Saga which is, I think, the the one that I would be the most concerned with. Oh, Grindstone. That's a card that's not even in the deck. That's excellent. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so I don't need mana. So what I can do is swap the Lotus Petal and the Mishra's Baubles around um, whenever I want. Uh, so at the end of their turn, if I don't do anything... Um, yeah, this does look like a Painter's Start. Then I can draw an extra card. Glimmer Post. Okay, they have four mana and nothing to do with it. No, no, never mind. They have something to do with it. I'm making a saga. That seems decent. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to swap this and this. And then end step, draw another card. They have a Bajuka Bog. That's kind of annoying, actually. Uh, okay. So what I could do is Dark Ritual out Defense Grid and activate Saga, um, and then just, you know, F F6 throughout the entire turn. I don't hate that because then I can, I'm not worried about defense grid in this matchup in game one. So then that defense grid can turn into a Mishra's bobble. Yeah, that's, that's reasonable. Just keep drawing more cards.
Okay, so Saga takes up to their their Saga takes up to one. Um, okay, and then they bog me, and I will swap Defense Grid and Mishra's Bobble out so that I can draw a card. I mean, we still look like Painter, which is nice. In step, they have a Vesuva. Oh, that's a good card. And we draw Goblin Welder. Okay. And then for turn, Mox Opal. That's pretty good. So I'm going to make another construct and grab a Mishra's Bobble again. Mm. Lion's Eye Diamond actually might be better. Yeah, let's grab the diamond. Okay, play out the Saga. And attack for five. Let's play out the next welder and if I need to I can weld for a bobble this lotus petal probably isn't doing much so that actually might be the goal here they played a thespian stage instead of the Vesuva that I knew about okay okay they're trying to go with saga which is fair. In that case, maybe I want my Saga constructs as big as possible. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Okay. Speaking of, these are going to be large and in charge. No blocks. As they go to three. Nice. <clears throat> uh, they've got a lot cards in hand. And they get to tutor up something. They obviously have one drops. Expedition map, that's a good one drop. Forest. Oh, they, they have played the Vesuva, right? No, no, they haven't played the Vesuva. Hmm. Okay, Green Sun Zenith. <laughs> what do they get? Outland Liberator. Oh no. Oh, they don't have mana. They don't have mana to activate it. That's great. <clears throat> Okay, so let's see. This is the one that is going to die first. This is the one that has gotten another target. Okay, so this one can go. Yeah, okay, our opponent has conceded the game. The nice thing about this is that they were forced to block all three of my constructs that could attack this turn with each of their blockers. Um, yeah, this would also have just been lethal. Um, but I could have gotten in for two, and they would have been at one, and then it would have been just fine. Yeah. Um, for now, they think that I am a uh, painter deck. I didn't necessarily want to show them tendrils. Uh, this is game one. They have no idea that I'm a storm deck. 
But hi, Tony. Welcome. Uh, okay. So... Let's see. Is this a Haywire Might matchup? Yes. Is this a Leyline Helm matchup? No. Is this a... Surgical... Surge node? No. Trash for treasure by force. I think not. This is Cloud Post, yes. We are we are playing up against Cloud Post. Um Fatal Push, probably reasonable. They're a Green Sun Zenith deck. They have Collector Oof, which would be kind of problematic. Do I need to play defense grids at all? Uh, what's Cloud Post? Okay, so Cloud Post is a card that is uh, shares a type post um, with another land, Glimmer Post. And they have abilities that increase with the number of posts you have in play. Cloud Post, for example, taps for one mana for each post you have in play. Land with type post. Um... And it's essentially like modern Tron on steroids. They are a fast, big mana deck that win the game by casting Emrakul and other Eldrazi, or they're playing green for um, the uh, Primeval Titan. So very, very big deck. I'm going to have to go change the subtitles for that one. That's going to autocorrect to awful things. Uh, this is a keepable hand. I'm going to keep this hand. It's not disruptive, other than this fatal push. Uh, but this is a fairly quick peer into the abyss. So I'm going to keep it. This is kind of a six already, but I kind of like this fatal push. So once upon a time from our opponent and they find a forest do they play a forest no they give me a try land hmm saga okay <clears throat> interesting that they played a forest but didn't actually play the land that I about okay there's cloud post oh it's locust not post i'm sorry it's locust taps to add colorless for each locust on the battleford battlefield uh brainstone in the list uh well, i don't know i might i might think about that at the uh the, the deck wrap up as of now could be good Okay, in Tomb, if I have a Welder, uh, this Mox Opal works out really nicely. We're about to show my opponent they don't know what's going on. Let's get a Peer into the Abyss. Put it into my hand, and things get spooky. There's the cloud post. Grid is good. Yeah. That might be. They're like a four force of, or a four uh, mind break trap, four force of vigor deck. That might actually be decent. Uh, endurance, I didn't think about endurance. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is enough for peer. It is playing directly into Mind Break Trap. Um, but we're gonna do it. Waiting for our opponent with bated breath. They aren't paying costs. 
We drew 25 cards. Excellent. Okay. Yep, turn three. Very nice. Probably. We, like, we have the tendrils in hand. I am going to thought seize them first. Just in case. Um, what can I do here? So there, I knew I had something over here. Um, okay, so this is Thoughtseize plus Tendrils for more than enough. Crop Rotation, okay. Bajookabog. Got it. Uh, Ulamog, Surgical Extraction. Choose to not cast Surgical Extraction. Interesting. I will choose to Tendrils you. Okay. Turn three win. Um, very nice. So we're one and one. And uh, I got a lot of glare on my screen. I don't think that I'm washed out. Not yet. Okay, cool. Sun's going down. It's going down right behind me. Um, it's always... Always a... Time. Um, <clears throat> yeah, more ley lines than endurances these days, though. Yeah, I mean, I'm playing ley lines in a storm deck. It's a little wild to me. Seems pretty good. Um, all right. So let me uh, tell you a little bit about how you can support all of the content that you're watching, just like Sean Deegnan, excuse me. Um, this is a donation deck list that uh, Sean submitted, and we're playing for him on stream tonight, which is awesome. A really, really sweet list. I've been liking it a lot. You also get some awesome emotes as YouTube members to support the channel, spam the emotes, super awesome stuff. Uh, let me tell you about how you can do that. If you enjoy this video, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. You can also show your support by becoming a member of this channel. You get sweet perks such as badges, emotes, early access to videos, exclusive members only content, and access to our members discord section. As you increase the tiers, there are other rewards such as shop discounts, cyborg guides, and even free donation decks. Click the join button down below to find out more. We also have other ways you can support us like theepicsforum.com slash shop or submitting a donation deck via theepicsforum.com slash donation decks. That's enough for now. Let's play some magic. Alrighty, it is indeed time to combo and we won the die roll. Everos. Uh, this sounds really familiar to me. Uh, I'm not sure who they are, but uh, oh boy. Can I keep this hand? Obviously, it turn one echoes. Or I could uh, protect it. I should say. Um, <clears throat> oh yeah, this is Rakdos Storm. This is Citadel Storm, actually. This is quite interesting. Um, okay. I'm going to keep this. Uh, I don't think that I'm going to go for it on turn one, though. Um, I'm just a little bit of mana away from... Defense Grid and Wish Claw Talisman and Echo, which I think is better. Although our opponent has mulliganed to five, which makes me think that they're doing unfair things, but I'm going to just Vault of Whispers and pass. <laughs> All right, what are we doing? Scalding turn. This looks less unfair. Ponder. Okay. I mean, this still could be something like Sneak and Show. Last week, I actually played with Vesuvian Drifter, or Vesuvian Drifter. Uh, really fun, fun combo deck. Um, show and tell, sneak attack, Vesuvian Drifter. Okay. No, no. Legacy is actually... The majority of Legacy is fair stuff. Um, 
we're just not playing any of that here. That's all. We like to we like to play unfair decks in Legacy. Uh, we're not playing control decks. We're not playing mid range decks, tempo decks, any of the fair stuff that's going on in Legacy. Which there's quite a lot that's going on, and it's actually really some of the better stuff to be doing in Legacy. But um, just it's not as fun to me anyway. Force pitch force. Okay. I kind of wonder if they have a daze, and I can actually echo through a daze. Nice. I am going to. Okay, it did resolve. We have found our second land drop. Cool. Let's get that out of the way. Actually, I don't want to auto yield to that. That uh, seems like a bad thing to auto yield to. And I'm actually going to uh, welder here. Am I going to welder here? I am. Storm 9. Couldn't get there. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to activate the bobbles right away, but I will actually activate them before our turn. Um, brainstorm. Uh, they do have days. Hmm. I wonder if this is just Delver. Um, that just didn't have a one drop on turn one and just pondered instead. It's actually not unreasonable. They mulligan to five. Did they not hit land two? They did hit land two. Okay. Preordain. Okay, now I am thinking that this is more likely to be combo, um, although there are some blue-red decks that are a little bit bigger. They're p playing things like, like Third Path Iconoclast, which is uh, like a young Pyromancer effect. Um, Guys, one top, one bottom. Okay. Let's draw omniscience. Okay. Nope. Never mind. It's just show and tell. Got it. We have figured it out. Okay. That's all good. So. I want to play Wishclaw Talisman because that can get in Tomb, which can get Citadel into play. Uh, and I can do that and then play a Welder. It actually works out really nicely that Wishclaw Talisman is practically uncounterable um, because Welder can just, you know, bring it back from the graveyard. I have two artifact lands that I don't care about being in my graveyard. Okay, so do they have a sneak attack? They have a sneak attack. Do they have a creature or... Oh, no, they don't. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't really worried about playing the Welder into Days. Um, the second one was not as important. If it actually was Dazed, that would be fantastic for me. But they actually might have wanted to 
make sure that they had their land drops to play this four drop in their hand. So maybe they have a daze and they just chose not to play it. Okay. <clears throat> We're going to use Urza's Saga to get a Lion's Eye Diamond. Probably. So I can activate this Wishclaw Talisman Weld. Uh, yeah, so okay, hold up. This is going to be really cool. Um, I'm going to play a land, hold priority, activate the Wishclaw Talisman, activate Goblin Welder, sacking the Talisman and bringing back a Lotus Petal. So I still get the Tutor. And they don't get the talisman. So, you know, I could have just sacked the Lion's Eye Diamond. I was thinking that I wanted to save the experimental synthesizer for clearing the top of house of Bolus's Citadel. Uh, so I should get Entomb here, but I could have just sacked the, the Lion's Eye Diamond and gotten Bolus's Citadel. That's a little bit riskier, I suppose. <laughs> okay, they have a force, and they pitched omniscience. Okay. So, can I activate welder swapping this and this and then I have four mana left over no okay so I can just synthesize her here <clears throat> tendrils uh oh that's my wind condition uh that was potentially the worst card that I could have gotten. If it was a house, then I could have sacked the Lion's Eye Diamond, welded the... Okay. Um, welded the Lion's Eye Diamond back and played the house. But now, I don't want to play the Tendrils, but I might have to. Yeah. I'm going to. This makes... Well, I actually am down my echo, so maybe that was not necessary. But at least they can't pay seven and draw seven with Grizzlebrand. Yet. They have to attack first. Sure. Atraxa. Okay. Uh, they found an Emrakul, so we're dead. Wait, no, we're not actually dead. Um, so we could actually survive this attack with a welder or a land in play. Uh, it's probably not good enough. <laughs> like, we're only taking 22. Um, you know what? We're gonna try. Just, we're just gonna try. See if anything can happen with this. We'll leave the welder in play. Take 22. Oh, okay. No, we exiled the house. Okay, we're done. We can't win. Okay, we, uh, so Experimental Synthesizer left the battlefield, and because of it, it exiled the top of our library, and that I can play it until the end of turn. Uh, 
it was Bolas' Citadel, which was my way to win the game after this. And, uh, oof, okay. Didn't end up working. Okay, so, sneak and show. I don't think that I want anything. Our deck is perfect as it is. I don't want Helm and Leyline. They're not a graveyard deck. I don't want Surge Node or Haywire Might. They might be a Blood Moon deck, but that doesn't really stop us. Urza Zaga, but that's not really a main plan. Uh, yep, perfect as is. Let's try to get games two and three. Hmm. This is a nice saga, but caves to a quick combo. I think I'm gonna keep this. I'm gonna keep this and hope that they can't actually, let's hope that they kept a, a fairly interactive hand, right? So we're actually gonna start off strong with the saga. And the synthesizer. Infernal Tutor. That's not worth um, me sacking my Lotus Petal for. So that's just fine. I'm not gonna get like another land. Inside Diamond. That's pretty cool. Okay. Vault of Whispers. Lion's Eye Diamond. And we can pass, and our entire board, with the exception of Urza Saga, is artifacts. So our artifacts are going to be huge. It's actually going to be quite a quick clock. We just need to make sure that they don't have a particular card that I won't name out loud. But there's only one way to find out. Show and tell. Okay. I will put my land in. Emrakul. Okay. I have enough permanence, actually, to sack. That's gonna do anything. That's a good card. Okay, so we are no longer <clears throat> trying to win with Construct Beatdown. So I'm going to tap that, grab a Lion's Eye Diamond, and question is whether to Synthesizer now and have it in my deck or to not synthesizer and wait for it. I think I'm gonna wait for it. So that's blue and red. We have, oh, they have, okay, interesting. They had the answer. So we gotta see what this experimental synthesizer is gonna bring. Nothing. Uh, um, they did race and they did actually end up winning the race. I don't think I can do anything about that. Hmm. Okay. Unfortunate. Cannot beat Emrakul. Okay, so we're one and two so far. Uh, combo matchup. I really wish that I had some more thought seasons in the deck, um, but eh, that's just not how it's built. Okay, 
So let me show you a little bit about uh, another way to support our channel um, through Patreon. This is specifically the Epic Storm YouTube, or the Epic Storm website, excuse me. And uh, we write about the Epic Storm, the legacy deck. And we have an awesome host of writers of which I am included. And we have awesome monthly article series. We have five, six article series. We have a sideboard guide with regularly updated deck lists that you can gain access to as a Patreon member. You have our exclusive members section of our Discord, which, ha which has a bunch of awesome people and awesome discussion. You can look at some of the cool things that are not official uh, that we're kind of tinkering with at the moment, which, uh, hint, hint, could be really, really useful. But you can get all of that with a subscription to our Patreon. So let me tell you about that. Want early access to articles at theepicstorm.com? Become a member of our Patreon to get articles seven days early on top of other sweet benefits and help us pay our website team. You can sign up at patreon.com slash theepicstorm. Alrighty, so uh, that was a quick one. That was nice. Um, however, we are still going to just wait for our round four opponent. And um, again, I just want to say uh, this is an awesome deck that was a donation deck for a member of our YouTube channel, Sean Deegnan, which, man, this is, this is a really cool take on Storm. So for, um, who was it? Uh, talking about... Joseph Craig was talking about the Rakdos Storm that we were playing, and, well, this is it. This is really, really cool stuff. Okay, we are paired with a bunch of mana in our hand and nothing to do with it. I don't think that this is... Uh, we have so many tutors. We have so many tutors. We have experimental synthesizers. Um, we have Entomb. Our opponent kept seven. Um, TOTK, what's that, Jason? I'm going to be a little bit more disciplined, and I'm going to mulligan this hand. And I like this quite a bit. Okay. So we're going to keep this and bottom the tendrils of agony. And just fine. Oh, Tears of the Kingdom, of course. Uh, no, no, I haven't. Ooh, eight cast. Okay. This one might be a toughie. Okay. Let's see what we draw. Vault of Whispers. Not bad. Not bad. Okay. We really just need an Entomb. Uh, take two, two, for three weeks. Almost done with it, though. Yeah. Okay. So, Jason, do you um, do you play through a video game, start to finish, and just like straight through the storyline? Or do you meander and do side quests and kind of make sure that you're enjoying every aspect of the game? Um, or is like the goal uh, the enjoyment that you get? How, how do you how do you play video games? Hmm. Okay, Bobble <clears throat> from our opponent and Urza's Saga. That's gonna be kind of gonna be tough. Okay. Uh, final missions are cake. Yeah, absolutely. You want to be a buff boy before you actually get to the final boss. You're gonna be like, yeah, this is old school. This is you. You are not ready for this. I'm gonna one shot you, and you're gonna be mad about it. I'm essentially a demigod. Yeah. Ooh, in tomb. Hey, that's the thing. Okay, so I actually have 
protection in the form of Cabal Therapy. Uh, oh, Rocket League. Yeah, heck yeah. That's kind of fun. Rocket League, uh, the, the dexterity that you do with, like, dribbling a ball in the air. Really cool. Uh, accidentally cyberpunk. Oh, no. Yeah, this main story I thought was short, but um, there's just... It's an open world game. The main story was not really the, the draw for Cyberpunk, right? So, it makes sense. I used to actually watch, um, ooh, what are they gonna see? They saw Entomb, okay. Uh, I used to watch competitive Rocket League tournaments, actually, on Twitch. Um, it was interesting. Okay. I'm gonna let my opponent draw and then see what I draw. Okay, let's dark ritual. Cabal therapy them. We're gonna name force of will. And they don't have it. Uh, okay, so we can entomb a house. We're gonna bury and resurrect this house. This is excellent. So let's um, just go for the one that's right here. It's tapped. Okay, Thoughtseize. Let's Thoughtseize our opponent. Let's take the, um, probably the one, two, three. Let's probably take the thought cast. Okay, defense grid. Another defense grid. Oof, this is gonna be expensive as far as life total goes. Okay, we have played a land. Oh no. Okay, so I can't do anything to change the top of my library right now. Guess what I could have done was use the Lotus Petal for the Dark Ritual. That might have been a little bit safer, actually. I wasn't sure that it was all going to resolve, so I wasn't wanting to go all in, but I probably should have. Uh... But in the meantime, we do have double defense grid as protection, so. Um, I could have taken the thought monitor. Um, if they play the thought monitor, I'm not really concerned about that um, because of this defense grid. I might want to cabal therapy um, myself, or I might want to use double welders at some point. Um, during the next combo turn. So I kind of wanted to just leave my options open. Uh, yeah, Zag's grid is, grid is fantastic. Um, so yeah, so now I have a lot of options with the welders um, instead, but maybe taking their thought monitor is more important because like they can draw into a um, chalice or they can just draw it for the top, okay. Hmm. Yeah. That's kind of where I was going with that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they have a Chalice of the Void and they played their Ancient Tomb, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, Joseph, they have the, um, the Channel Land um, to bounce it to my hand. Which would actually just be fine because I can Cabal Therapy myself, put it in the graveyard, and then weld it back and forth. Kind of be, kind of be nice. Okay, there's the Thought Monitor, and the Mox Opal is also gone. They have an Urza Saga and two unknowns in hand. I think I'm fine with that. I'm at 13 life. 
And they have a chalice, but like I can still cast the spells off of the top. So we'll see. Mox Opal is a good start. We love that. Goblin Welder will get countered, but I'm playing it out anyway. Lotus Petal. I could look. Yeah, I could weld it out. Uh, you know what? That is, you know, Sean? Yes, you are correct. Okay, so actually, a fetch land is potentially the best card to have on top of my library. If it's a land, because I can change the top again. Uh, okay, now, actually, with Synthesizer, I do want to weld out the chalices. You are correct, Sean and Joseph. So let's weld this with the Shadow Spear. Uh, it could have been the opal. Uh, yeah, they have an opal, but it was it was un it was tapped, and I was gonna give them an un untapped opal. They don't really have any activated abilities that they could do. Okay, so hold control with this experimental synthesizer. Oh, that's actually kind of nice. Okay, so if it was an instant, I could cast it. But tendrils of agony is nice to just kind of store away for later. Okay land so I'm going to fetch I'm gonna need to cast this uh, with mana so I don't want to like crack the synthesizer and pay for it because I'm gonna need the mana that I have available hmm okay so I don't have the ability to get hellbent but okay, let's see. one two three four five six seven eight pretty close to actually activating this bolus of citadel one two three four five six seven eight nine so i actually can kill my opponent one two three uh i can't kill my opponent quite yet but that's fine we'll get there We're taking out a bad, <laughs> bad lands. Um, okay, Experimental Synthesizer is another great one. Hold Control, Lion's Eye Diamond is a fantastic one. So I think that we're all rolled up here. Um, this is going to be easy peasy now. We don't even need to worry about it all, but I am going to cast this Infernal Tutor. And then Sack, which I could have done at any point, but to cast like an Infernal Tutor for a Demonic Tutor, but it was fine. We had a, a, a smorgasbord of riches here and double defense grid protection we could have won however we wanted to so that felt pretty good that felt very good um okay chalice means that i want haywire might means that i want surge node means that i actually probably want by force in my main deck i don't know like the one burning wish as an out to chalice is fine but wish claw as a four of with the ability to go get by force as an out to chalice might be better this is not a discard matchup so i don't have to worry about trash for treasure feed the swarm hmm so like feed the swarm is nothing but uh i'm just wondering about this by force what am i going to take out i'm going to take out Probably basic swamp. That's not very necessary. Maybe a mox opal. And I don't know if I want to take anything else out. 
So maybe it's leave the by force in, and I have two answers to Chalice in the main deck through Urza's Saga, and that's it. That might be fine, you know? And I'll just prioritize Urza Sagas, potentially, in my keeps. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. It is a Euro Swamp, yes. You hate to cut it, but this is my favorite swamp. Uh, in paper, I have a couple of these. These are the Mike Plug, uh Swamps, or Marshes of France my favorite swamp of all time so i am also going to keep this hand by the way absolutely disgusting i'm just missing a thought uh shattering speed spree better than by force um you know potentially um i don't know you're, you're actually going to have to ask Sean, because uh, this is their Dono deck, and it might be better than By Force. Um, obviously, like, the replicates can't be countered by Chalice, so you're totally fine. You have to do it for two anyway. Um, but it's also harder to Force of Will, so it might be better than By Force, um, potentially. Uh Camarag, yes, absolutely. That is the French swamp. I think that that's how you pronounce it. Um, we'll see. My French pronunciation is probably garbage. Oh. Okay. That was not something that I was expecting. Chalice on zero. That is uh, potentially very painful. I mean, not even potentially. It is just very painful. The Urza Saga is lovely, but I don't have anything but the Surge node to get. Maybe I should have played the Saga out first. Hmm, that's probably true. I probably should have just played the Saga out. Yeah, sure, play the Chalice out. Do it. Play into the Chalice, I should say. Our opponent uh, forgetting that Chalice is not one-sided like all the other hate cards that exist. Um, okay. So I am going to test with this Burning Wish. See if they have a force. Oh, they don't. Okay, so this by force is going into my hand. Yep. Uh... Added an Entomb and two fetch lands. Okay, I like the fetch lands for what it's worth. I, I think that, I don't know what they were replacing or anything like that, but seems pretty fun. And yeah, this does speak of uh, this of Tony's uh, handiwork. Like Urza Saga and Infernal Tutor are things that I would expect from a Tony deck list for sure. They have no land. What are they doing? Oh, we drew the surge node. That's kind of bad. Okay. Okay, that resolved. one this is just an f6 oh my gosh do they just not have anything what is going on opponent I was thinking that I was going to play this conservatively but our opponent isn't doing anything so we're going to put the house into play and see what happens oh no okay 
We get to pass. But, oh man, what is our opponent up to? Okay, they have a zero. We knew that. Kind of expected that from the chalice. They're an eight force of will deck. And they just passed. What is going on? I mean, maybe they just want to see cool stuff, which totally fine by me. Okay, so we're going to find uh, probably a Lion's Eye Diamond here. Haywire Mite's kind of spicy. I can get rid of their Mox Opal, but let's just do the Lion's Eye Diamond and be disciplined Storm players. Oh, have another one anyway. <laughs> they might not have a blue card. I don't know. Okay. Play the Wishclaw Talisman. Vault of Whispers is our land. Okay, so we have another brick. We can use the Wishclaw Talisman to find something else, like an experimental synthesizer. Um... If that's the case, do I want to sacrifice this Lion's Eye Diamond uh, to get Hellbent? Maybe. Let's do that. Yeah, let's activate this Wishclaw Talisman. Get an Experimental Synthesizer, I think? We could, like, Tudor Chain, actually. You know what? Yeah, we can Tutor Chain. That's probably just better. Infernal Tutor is such a fun card. Okay, so let's do that. And then I'll sack the Lion's Eye Diamond here. Let's get another Infernal Tutor. And then we're back. Okay. Another brick. We have another Infernal Tutor, and this one can get the Synthesizer. <laughs> or can get Tendrils for later. I kind of like the Synthesizer. We don't... We're not quite at the storm that we need for that. So let's get... Synthesizer. Haywire Might. Defense Grid. Thoughtseize. What do they do? Chalices. Okay. Interesting. Bobble. Synthesizer. Oh, we have the defense grid. That's kind of why I wasn't too worried about that. Um, okay, so this is my exile that I can play. And then this is the top of my library. So hold priority. Okay, so that's fine. I'll exile this Lotus Petal, play another Lotus Petal, play a Mox Opal, and we have it rolled up. There's a Wishclaw Talisman. Okay, so this Wishclaw Talisman gets Tendrils of Agony. And our opponent said Chi Chi's. Lovely. Look at that. Okay, we are rolled up two and two. Bolas' Citadel is such a fun card. Are you kidding me? How could you not like this? This is this is vintage magic being played in Legacy, and we're all here for it. Two and two. Uh, there. There we go. I don't know. It's kind of hard to see where I'm at. Um, and we're playing for a positive record. It's fantastic. Um, needle the Bobble. Uh, yeah, yeah. Mini, mini boss fight. Heck yeah. Okay. All right. So while we're f finding our last opponent, I'm going to tell you a little bit about a uh, podcast and then a little bit about ways that you can still support the content that you're liking right now by, you know, sharing it, subscribing, commenting, all that good stuff. So back to backs really quick. The best legacy podcast? That would be Eternal Glory featuring myself, Brian Cook, alongside Brian Cobal and Phil Gallagher. We're available on all major podcast platforms and YouTube. Oh, and by the way, um, the podcast episode that released um, 
just a little bit ago for Eternal Glory is about the um, awesome online resources that you can have access to. Um, one that they didn't mention, which is a shame because it, I think it's an awesome resource, is the epicstorm.com. It is very specific, but it is one of the most comprehensive deck-based resources available. So, you know, if you like it, you can support us. All right, back to back, I told you. Thanks for still watching. If you're still watching, make sure to give this video a like, comment, and subscribe. While you're near the description, here's a reminder to use our affiliate links if you're going to make a purchase from Amazon, Card Hoarder, or TCG Player. Just above those affiliate links, you'll find our social channels. Make sure to join those to connect with us. Alrighty, uh, we are against Jay Liddy, and we're playing for the pity chest. I think that that works out perfectly, and I'm gonna keep this. This is a nice hand. And uh, we're all rolled up with Saga that I'm going to play out on turn one because I am a smart and competent magic player that knows how to sequence lands. <clears throat> For sure. Flooded Strand. So this is Doomsday or Death Shadow. Death Shadow it is. Probably. Doomsday still plays a, a shock land. Sometimes. So, see what's going on. Street Wraiths. Are we going to have a turn one Death Shadow? No. Okay. Close, though. And they chose not to shuffle. I'm really just avoiding one card. Grief. Okay. They didn't have a grief. Hmm. Welder is interesting. Shockland and Doomsday. It is the fifth underground sea. And uh, you just need lands that tap for blue and black. Plus, it's kind of hedging against surgical, sort of. A wasteland and underground sea. Surgical extraction it. Oh no, I don't have any more mana producing lands. Um, now you don't have to worry about that. Okay. <clears throat> Play out the Lotus Petal. I'm not expecting any kind of like permanent removal, uh, but I am expecting discard and maybe the Lotus Petal is something that I want. Surgical lands. Yeah, it's not a very common thing, but with Doomsday, you can surgical lands if you have counted them. Oh, we're getting discarded. Okay, they can take, they can take something. Yeah, they should take something. Um, no, but if you doomsday and you have a pile that includes lands, um, then they can surgical like your underground sea and your, well, doesn't work because you are exiling your graveyard. Never mind. Never mind. Uh, is shadow just that good? Uh, so I've been playing against it a lot on Thursdays specifically. So much so that... I played three Watery Grave matchups last stream, and they absolutely wrecked me. Um, are we getting another Thoughtseize here? Reanimate the Street Wraith. Okay. Yeah, that's some old tech. I like it, but it is a little, a little classic. Okay. Let's see what we're doing here. Another experimental synthesizer. It might be the power vacuum left by Delver. It might just be people producing content about Death Shadow and then people kind of picking it up because of that. Shadow hasn't been putting up too many results. It's just seeing more play. Um, as far as I know, I don't think that I've seen very many results with Shadow. I could be wrong. Um, but... Okay, so something potentially interesting is end turn 
dark ritual to make a construct and then use the lotus petal to make another construct tutor up a lion's eye diamond and our opponent is at six life and very close to being dead um sorry i'm a little washed out that's better um okay they have attacked for three which means they're not blocking my construct which i'm pretty okay with Obviously, they can have a big avatar. Um, it'd be a 7-7. Seven, seven. I totally could gum up the board. There it is. Okay, so now I am less incentivized to go with the um, construct beatdown plan. <laughs> Although it's still not bad. I make two constructs that are essentially lethal attackers. Yeah, it's probably not good enough. So what are these? These are gonna be, so I make one and then I untap and I have to sack the Lotus Petal, make the second one. So I have one, two, three. Urza Saga gets the fourth artifact, which is likely a Lion's Eye Diamond. Uh, they're four fours, which means they're both, they're together lethal, which comes up the board enough for me to kind of like get to a point where I can win. I don't hate this. This might be wrong. But I'm going to go for it. And we draw an Infernal Tutor. Okay. So we have a pair of three threes, and now we have four fours. Do I get the Lion's Eye Diamond? Yes. <clears throat> so this kind of gums the board up. They can't attack with the shadow. Or I guess they can, but it's probably not a good idea. Um, Street Wraith doesn't have Swamp Walk, so I can double block, or I can just block it, and then, yeah, I have a four force. Um, sorry, my cat is. Cat found a piece of like the rip away for to open up a cardboard FedEx box, and um, it's now the thing that is most entertaining of all. So they just uh, are letting me <clears throat> block here. This is not a swamp. Uh, they are. Ooh, okay. They're making an eleven eleven. Interesting. Uh, Lion's Eye Diamond. Not bad. Mostly because this pumps the construct back up to uh, something that can kill the Street Wraith. And I don't need to attack. Death Shadow is not going to be lethal on its own. If they attack with the Street Wraith, I can block it again. I still have this Echo kind of just sitting in my back pocket. Okay. That's fine. Hmm. Gurmag Angler. That is interesting. That was not expected. Thoughtseize, that's perfect. That is exactly what I needed. I can beat a daze. They might have to force this. 
We just need, uh, ooh, brainstorm, okay. We don't need storm count. They're at two. One copy is all that I need of Tendrils of Agony. Um, in fact, if this echo does not get interacted with, then what I would love is to draw land and Tendrils of Agony, and that's it. That's all I need. Two to play around counter spells, yeah. It's fair. Force of will is the take. Um All right. Sack for blue, sack for black, which we have discovered is the color that I most need. See what happens when I spin the wheel. Ugh. So that's four, five. That's so close. That's not enough. I am one mana short. That's all I needed was one more mana. Can I? No, Wish Claw is net neutral. Because uh, I can, like, Play the Wishclaw Talisman, activate the Wishclaw Talisman, get a Lion's Eye Diamond, but I don't net mana for any of that because the Lion's Eye Diamond only makes three mana and this whole thing is three mana. Ugh. Can I do anything here? Oh, that's so frustrating. I mean, I'm gonna just... I'm just going to figure it out. Um, they might have counter magic anyway, which means that this line wasn't going to work. Uh, I needed the one of Tendrils of Agony. It just wasn't going to happen. Or just a, a little extra mana. Days. Uh, yeah, I'll pay. Go for it. Nothing's going to change this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to thought seize our opponent for information. We've seen Baleful Strix, which is not necessarily a card that I care about. And they have to let this resolve. They, I mean, they could concede. Concede to the Thoughtseize, yeah? Brainstorm makes sense. Um, okay. Brazen Borrower, Reanimate... Okay, I'll be good and concede now. We need to get both post board games. Uh, they're a dredge deck, which is not the same as a graveyard centric deck. So the ley lines are not for this. These are for reanimator, these are for dredge, these are for other things. Um, speaking of which, Joseph, you were talking about streamers upping their dredge content. I played dredge on stream. Had a blast. Got a 4-1. Um, dredge is still bad. I hate to break it to you. Uh, okay, maybe the Fatal Pushes. These are really for, like, hate bears. These aren't really for things that I... Like, I'm gonna face this matchup, like Death Shadows. Um, I think this is uh, an instance where the deck is perfect. And we need to be playing better to make sure that the deck can be played perfectly. Uh, so I'm going to resubmit 
and call it good. Two post-board games for the Pity Chest and the Positive Record. Uh, this is not gonna work. Yeah, this is just not gonna work. Um, this probably not either. These sagas, uh, colorless sources of mana and not gonna work out here. Okay. This will do. I'm gonna keep this. And I'm going to bottom the Synthesizer and the Mox Opal. Or is it the Dark Ritual? So I have to worry about Thoughtseize. I'm on a mulligan to five. I have to, I can't play around Thoughtseize. I need to play towards finding my second mana. Yeah, okay. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, no. Okay. I'm going to do this. I'm going to play towards them not having a force in their opener and just jam the Wishclaw Talisman. Because, like, I need to do something positive in this match, and a Dark Ritual is actually not going to help me out with that. I would need to find a plus one mana, and then I'm still short, so. Uh, see what happens. That resolved, okay. And then upkeep we can bobble them to draw cards. And they are drawing a null rod. Budge. Uh, okay, that one's gonna be a toughie. I can echo immediately. Mm. It's a it's a one of null rod, which is typically why when I play the epic storm, for example, I don't care about the one of null rod. I'm not gonna bring in a one of abrupt decay to deal with the null rod uh it's just like you know what if they have it fine they've got it but well they had it okay vault of whispers lion's eye diamond defense grid all right not quite needed so we've got to go for the spin Echo of Eons, and it's just got to be really good. They didn't have counter magic. They didn't know they were um, drawing the Null Rod, and they didn't counter the Wish Called Talisman. So they don't have counter magic. They're digging for it, which is terrifying. What do they have in their opening hand? Do they find it? Survey says paying costs. Is it surgical extraction or is it force of will? Force of negation, force of will. Okay. Well, I think that that's going to be it. I cannot, apparently, win against uh, underground sea watery grave decks. So that's a thing. No pity chest today. Um... But we can do a little bit of a deck recap. Um, so, really fun deck. I had a lot of fun. I know that y'all actually enjoyed me watching or watching me go off with this Bolus' Citadel. Um, and, you know, we got defense grids to back it all up, protect us, thought seizes, and cabal therapies. The cabal therapy ended up actually being pretty good as a sort of painless um, peak. Uh, so that I can keep going off with Bolus' Citadel. Entomb felt okay. Um, did I Entomb a Citadel before? I did. Um, and I like that there's only one and the one Burning Wish because we have eight tutors here. Um, 
in Wishclaw Talisman and Infernal Tutor, we can find the Entomb, we can find the Burning Wish when we need to. Um, Experimental Synthesizer also actually worked surprisingly well. Um, it worked better when I had Citadel in play so that I could clear lands off of the top of the library, but um, it was just decent card advantage of a sort. Um, there was a time where I was able to Synthesizer uh, to pump up really fast Urza Sagas against our Sneak and Show opponent. Um, it didn't end up working out very well because they're a show and tell Emrakul deck, but we had seven sevens on turn two, which felt really good. Um, I really like this sideboard juke. Uh, Tony does this a lot with Leyline of the Voids and Helm of Obedience. I really wish that we were able to actually showcase it against a graveyard deck like Reanimator that um, the ley lines actually would work out really well against. Unfortunately, we didn't actually come up with any kind of reanimator matchups, um, but still, it's there and actually works quite nicely. This seems really good against, um, like, air decks. Uh, Urza Saga obviously is one of the main reasons for that. Um, and then just the welder nonsense, um, welding back defense grids or lion's eye diamonds or synthesizers for major card advantage over the course of a turn uh wishclaw talismans that was a fun interaction that i didn't actually realize right off the bat uh i can activate wishclaw talisman and before i give it to my opponent i can weld it away for something else and my opponent doesn't get the talisman but i get the tutor that was really good i liked that a lot um next week jason i don't know if you would like to submit a donation deck, then you certainly can. But typically, I kind of just play what's what's fun. Um, I have a long list of decks that I want to play. Uh, it's, it's quite extensive. Um, I will give you a little bit of a hint of what I'm not playing until the air clears up around the North American continent, and that's Turbo Smog. Seems a little... Um, out of touch so we won't be doing that but maybe i'll play oops all spells maybe i'll play reanimator maybe i'll play who knows i'm i'm looking forward to it i always have fun on thursdays uh they're really a nice way to get over the hump of the thursday friday slog you know wednesdays are fine it's hump day kind of thing but really thursdays are are the long days for me um, work tends to drag so looking forward to a stream is just the easy peasy way to, to make this day go by quickly um, so uh, without further ado I'm going well I just messed up that window now it has to be perfectly straight okay excellent uh, without further ado I'm going to leave it here this deck uh, performed admirably ad admirably uh, it attempted to steer me towards correct plays. Uh, I didn't get there, uh, but it is it is much better than a 2-3. And I think that uh, I'll probably play a couple of leagues off stream and, and see how it goes. But thank you all for hanging out with me and chatting and supporting this stream. If you do enjoy this, make sure to like and comment if it's a YouTube video. And if you're watching and you're unsubscribed, if you want to know more about this um, content, then check out the channel. There's awesome stuff. Check out the website if you like the Epic Storm. And I will see you next week. See you around.